What's going on everyone? In this video, I'll be talking about the May SAT results. Yes, the May SAT just finished uh, probably like some hours ago and students are already DMing me explaining you know, how the exam was, how they felt about it, questions, all that. So I'm making this video to address everything. And if you guys are interested in you know, discussing how it was, you know, the comments are freedom of speech. So in the comments below, just have a discussion with each other. And if you are unsure about anything, just ask the people who also have taken the May SAT. Because most people watching this video have probably just taken it. Now, real quick, if you thought you did bad on the ST math section, it's probably because you didn't study enough. So if you want to make sure you get an 800 the next time, be sure to check out my ST math course description below. Use code better next time to get 25% off. So first to start off with the reading session, what was the general consensus? Well, the reading section, is obviously with a harder SAT uh, section, right? Especially the comprehension part. That's the part that a lot of students do not get uh, a high score on. Their raw score is usually low. I was one of the students who struggled super hard on the reading comprehension section up until I started studying hard, you know, um, uh, watching Khan Academy, annotating text, and all the other tips that I've explained in my other videos. SAT reading is hard, and there's no doubt about it. But for this SAT in particular, a lot of people were actually saying that the SAT reading was easier than the SAT they took in back in March. They said that the SAT reading was not as hard as the SAT reading in the past uh, SAT in March, which means that like, this SAT might be a little easier or it might mean like the, the curve might be a little harsher because an easy SAT means there's a harsh curve. Let's say an SAT is pretty easy, and everyone's raw score is like pretty high. Then if you get one question wrong, that's like minus 30. Versus a hard SAT where a lot of people's raw score is very low, then if they get even three questions wrong, they might only drop 10 points. So the difficulty of the SAT as well as the curve matters a lot. Now the ST math section, I heard that was a little harder this time around than the March one, which probably means that as the SAT goes on in the year, and this has happened a lot of times in history, the problems get a little more complex in terms of like the content is the same, the overall difficulty is the same, but the wording might change, it might be a little more confusing because the March SAT is the first SAT of the, you know, of the school year, right? So they're kind of testing out questions, they're kind of testing out uh, things, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. If the SAT is way too hard, then they're probably gonna you know, tone it down for the next SAT, which in this case was the May SAT. But I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, okay, now that you know you told us about how the SAT reading section was, how the SAT math section was, SAT reading being harder this time, SAT math being a little easier this time, what would the curve look like, right? Based on the consensus, what's the general curve looking like? If I had to predict the curve, I would say that the curve would most likely be a less harsh curve, right? Because I feel like the raw score on this SAT will be much uh, lower based on the students' uh, reactions. And you, as you guys discuss in the comments, you can talk about what you guys felt, but the curve will probably be less harsh. So you can get a little more questions wrong and still only drop like 10, 20, 30 points, right? Maybe if you get uh, three questions wrong, you only drop 20 points, as opposed to getting three questions wrong, you're dropping like 80 points, right? Which is good for students who did well on the SAT, right? If your raw score was high, you are already in a position where you could probably score above a 1500, which is honestly the best score you could possibly get, because that's top 99 percentile. Now, personally, I always liked a easier curve on the SAT because an easier curve means that the students who did well on the SAT, right, they will get a higher score and they'll get a score that is representative of their abilities, right? It's not like they're getting one question wrong and boom, minus 40, no. Because they uh, did overall a good job, they would still get like above a 1500 range, which they honestly earned. And now, personally, I hate the harsh SAT curve because a student who did you know very well and they should be getting like a 1500 plus might end up with like a low 1400 because they got like five questions wrong. That's honestly absurd. I never understood why it works like that. I wish that the SAT was more standardized to the point where literally the question difficulty is like almost exactly the same and the raw scores as a result will probably be almost exactly the same. So the, the curve will be consistent, right? Because I hate when the curve is like really harsh this month and really nice this month, right? No one likes that. Personally, I kind of got lucky because my mark SAT that I got 1530 on, the curve was very nice to me, right? If I got like three questions wrong on, I think one of the sections and I only got minus 10 for that, which is like, like crazy, I was like, wow, like I, I should have got like minus uh, 30 at least, right? You would think one question wrong is like about 10 points, sometimes even 20 points, but um, I didn't. So that was extremely lucky, extremely blessed to be a part of that March SAT. That's why I always say the March SAT is easier, but in this sense, the ST May was kind of uh, harder, right? And But the curve as a result will be a nicer curve. Now, when exactly will you get your scores? I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering like, you know, how long do you have to wait because you're probably deciding whether you should be taking a June SAT or not. 
right? And honestly, if you got the score you want, there's probably no point of taking the junior SAT. Now, if this is your first time taking the SAT, no matter what you get, even if you get a 1590, I want you to take the SAT again because you can get a 1600, right? And you should always take the SAT twice because you can super score, which is where you get your best scores from your first attempt, your best scores from your second attempt, and merge them together to get the best SAT score you can possibly get. So that's why I always take the SAT twice, uh, three times, not needed. Once is too little, two is the that golden number. So please take the SAT twice. Now, if you this is your second time taking the SAT, then usually the third time you take it, your score doesn't change much. Sometimes it even goes down. So I would just stick with whatever score you get. Now, like I said, guys, you wanna make sure uh, that you're not wasting your time studying for the SAT again in June. So that's why I'm gonna tell you guys that most likely you'll be getting your SAT score within two to three weeks of taking the exam. That's how it's usually always been. So you can wait until then to register for the June SAT. I'm pretty sure spots aren't filling out anytime soon. So, you know, relax, take it easy. Um, Take a break now that you've you know, done your grinding, done your studying. And if you feel like you haven't done enough studying or if you feel like that you could do uh, better, then check out my SD math course if you want to improve your SD math score. But thank you all for watching. That's it for this video. I'll see you all next time. Peace. I hope you all do well in SAT. Comment down below.